As I was in Cedar Rapids uh, about two weeks ago, meeting with uh, their their flood personnel, with the city manager, the mayor, and uh, local councilmen and local business partners there, uh, looking at their efforts to rebuild from uh, the, the 2008 floods, our efforts that the state and FEMA are moving forward with in that area. Also, uh, discussed the, uh, the wall that they're talking about and looked at the wall that Quaker Oats is building around its plant. So the state, uh, particularly uh, several state agencies, including my office and our and our recovery division, working close with the city to help them uh, build and mitigate. The city of Cedar Rapids wants help in financing that because um, if they can't get uh, money for that particular plan, um, what they want from from the feds. Uh, I mean, Governor, have, have you um, given any thought to whether um, sales tax mitigation effort like they're requesting is a possibility? Well, there's been some discussion about that. I've said we're interested in, in working with them and looking at all the different options there are to deal with those those issues. Obviously, we think it's the primary responsibility of the Army Corps of Engineers. And what I've been hearing from local leaders in Cedar Rapids is the Corps is willing to do one side of the river but not the other side. I don't really quite understand why they're only willing to do one side. We're going to see, you know, what the circumstances there are and what the state might be able to do to help the community uh, in, in terms of dealing with that situation. And I, I have heard from a number of businesses there that it is important. I think it's the west side of the river that uh, the that, uh, east side, I think, that the core says that they will provide funding for them. There's questions about the funding for the west side, and we want to look at you know, what's the most efficient and economical way to do that, but also one that, that meets the flood mitigation needs. So it's your feeling that might be sort of the best way to mitigate flooding. I know the well, people in the legislature would say lots of different bodies need to work together to, to do this. Right. Well, in Cedar Rapids, you either have to move everybody out or you have to have flooding. <coughs> Now, that's that's a situation in an urban area, and, and, and I, you know, I've, I've seen this before. I think you also there just needs to be some common sense used in it, and and also the question is, you know, should be, you know, should you protect for a hundred year flood or for a three hundred year flood or a five hundred year flood? If you want to protect for a five hundred year flood, you probably don't have uh, many places left in Iowa that you're going to have. So, you know, I think you got to have some practicality. In there's also a lot of people that I've dealt with in, in past floods uh, that, that maybe have a cabin along the river and they know there's danger of flooding, but uh, th this has been a family uh, home or, or it might need not be their permanent home, but it might be a cabin that they they spend some time at and, and they don't want to give it up, and I understand why. So I think we have to keep, you know, we need to, uh, we need to try to do what we can to mitigate flooding and, and warn people about the dangers of it, but also we need to respect people and, and their property rights as well in that process. Um, Governor, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie came here and campaigned for you and there was a bit of a love fest in your expression of what you thought of him. He has recently um, vetoed internet gambling in that state. I'm wondering if you would send a message to legislators that you would emulate Governor Christie or are you willing to well, I think each state has unique situations, and it's my understanding that, uh, uh, you know, because of their situation with Atlantic City and whatever, that uh, he felt it was appropriate to veto that legislation. Now, I don't know whether that legislation is likely to pass here or not. I know some of the people that are promoting it are saying, well, you've got this illegal offshore, offshore gambling that's going on. We want to prevent that from, from occurring. and, and this would be a way to, to have it done legally instead of being done illegally or without uh, the state getting any tax benefit from it. So I, I guess my feeling is I want to learn more about it, and I also want to learn more about why Governor uh, Christie chose to veto it. I understand, how, you know, I also know the new governor of Florida. I understand it's under consideration in Florida and California and other states as well. So I want to try to learn as much as I can. This is, a, this is kind of a new phenomenon. And as I understand it, it's a pretty 
significant issue and it one one that I think deserves to be very carefully studied. Um, is the argument that something illegal is happening and we need to make illegal so that we can tax it a valid argument? Because there's all sorts of illegal things that happen that we don't need to fund. Well, as, as you know, the, the, the people in the state of Iowa have supported legal gaming. Uh, however, uh, there is a concern about illegal activity that's going on uh, and the fact that this is being done offshore. And, and there's also questions about uh, the honesty and integrity of the system that's being done in this manner. We have always prided ourselves that in Iowa, gaming is strictly regulated and controlled. And we have kept it honest and we've kept the corruption and the problems out. That's not been true a lot of other places. You know there's a former governor, Edwin Edwards, in prison for what he did in gaming down in Louisiana. And there are people from Illinois and even legislators from South Carolina and Arizona that have gone to prison for that. So we want to keep it honest and I've always said Protecting the integrity of the state is the most important responsibility, and that's the way that I look at it. I want to make sure that uh, the integrity of the state is, is protected in the process, and, and uh, we certainly prevent uh, our citizens from being defrauded by uh, unscrupulous activities. I want to study, and first of all, you know, it's usually my policy not to threaten veto on anything until I've seen it in its final form. And things can change dramatically, and uh, I think it's important to learn as much as I can before staking out a position. I learned this a long time ago, and that is um, it's important to have all the facts and all the information and not just make a snap judgment based on uh, in inadequate an inadequate amount of uh, information. So I want to learn more about all of these issues before making any decision. How would it square with your concern raised during a campaign that Iowa was saturated with gambling and we didn't need to have Well, that's, I, I continue to take that position. Uh, there, there is one new casino being built. It's being built a half mile from South Dakota. When we were up at Rock Rapids at the uh, uh, we had a, actually the lieutenant governor wasn't there that day because she had a grandchild that was born. <laughs> but uh, I, I, uh, I flew back from uh, Sioux Falls and I went right by the new facility that's being built. That's the 18th casino in our state. Uh, and I think that's an adequate number. I, I think it's basically a mature industry. Uh, and, and I have always said that the most important thing is we need to keep it honest. And I think it's been, uh, it, it needs to be, and the people I just appointed the Racing and Gaming Commission, I personally interviewed them, and I told them the most important thing is to protect the integrity of the state. And, and the people that, you know, um, that were appointed, I feel confident, will do that. Uh, so you would view internet gambling as an expansion? Well, the question is, can we prevent Iowans from being involved in the illegal activity that's going on offshore? right now. That is going on, I'm told, in significant numbers. I'm trying to find out, okay, what, how can we best deal with that? And I'm open to looking at uh, what the options and alternatives are in trying to deal with that.